He focuses on retail strategy and innovation. From Instagram, here's Mike Hondorf. Good afternoon. Before I start, I had a little uh, audience participation. Since it's 3.30, you had lunch, we're in a dark room, and you're probably falling asleep. I won't ask you to stand up, but I will ask you to raise your hand. How many people remember the Atari console in the game Frogger? Oh, this makes me feel so good. A, I kind of woke you up because your blood's flowing, and B, I'm not the oldest person in the room full of media people, which is usually the case. So yes, I remember Frogger 2, and I think our world resembles a modern day Frogger. This is the Facebook campus in Menlo Park. It could be any street in any city in the world. I was in Tokyo two weeks ago on my honeymoon, and I literally was running into people left and right because no one was looking up from their phone. Um, probably a lot of us are looking at our phones right now, and this is literally just the reality of daily life. Pessimists would say this is dehumanizing our culture, we are becoming less social, and our capability to interact with others is just getting less and less each and every day. And I actually argue the opposite. I think technology is bringing us closer, and I'm going to kind of tell you why I think that. So at a base level, humans crave connections. We're an incredibly social species, and we have this magic sauce, which is unique to any species in the world, that is our ability to decode and understand people's experiences through sight, sound, and motion. So what an amazing thing that we live in this world and Instagram is created and very quickly grows as a place where people are connecting and interacting with each other each and every day. And whether it's me sharing this amazingly artful photo of the most stressed out dog on the planet, Baxter, one of my two dogs, or something more uh, serious, Instagram is a place for real connections and they're happening every day. So as processing power and networking speed has increased, um, think of the way in which sharing has changed and the way in which we connect. So backtrack to 1986, and we're on a family ski trip, annual family ski trip, and my dad had his trusty camcorder, which he had everywhere that we went. Y Hours and hours of footage ad nauseum, nothing this beautiful, but of me doing the pizza down the little thing, and he's skiing backwards. Then he edits it, puts in the VHS, puts it in during Christmas, and everyone promptly either falls asleep, leaves the room, or changes the conversation. Fast forward to today where I'm on a uh, chairlift in Whistler taking a hyperlapse with a better quality camera in the palm of my hand and sharing it within three seconds to everybody that is connected to me in Instagram. It's pretty profound and it's a place that I think is powering stronger connections in humanity. So at the, at the end of the day, what we're all about is expression and connection. We express ourselves in lots of ways. They could be humorous, they could be poetic, they could be artful. But at the end of the day, we're looking to connect with other people just like we have for eons. Um, and it's this connection that can be incredibly personal in the palm of your hand that I think is really interesting and that I think is exactly why Instagram is what it is. It's about expression and it's about connection and it looks a little like this. So, we are six years old, and we are now well over 500 million people globally using Instagram. 300 million of us are using it every single day. Over 100 million are using the Instagram Stories feature alone every single day, and that feature was launched two months ago. 80% uh, of us are outside of the US. We have doubled the size of Instagram in the last two years, and just under 100 million posts are shared every day onto Instagram. And on that note, the, the fastest growing type of uh, content on Instagram is video. Shouldn't be surprising, but video consumption, time spent with video on Instagram has increased 150% in just the last six months alone. So I'm always kind of amazed at what happens on the community of Instagram. Um, a lot of people go to Instagram to express themselves artfully. Uh, a lot of people go there to express themselves socially or about social justice. There's athletes. So a few of my favorite accounts are here. So there's a mom that lives in Hanover, New Jersey, uh, New not New Jersey, Hanover, Germany, a mom of three kids who just happened to be an illustrator in her free time. 
Her name's Kirsten Heisterman, and she goes by the uh, handle Spielkind. And she takes everyday objects, creates these artful little things, and posts them on Instagram, and has this massive community of places. She's making my world a smaller place because I'm now connected to an illustrator in the palm of my hand in Germany. We have people who are committed to social justice and even just awareness about major issues uh, facing our society. Katie Myler, one of Time's 2014 People of the Year, brought us on a real-time journey uh, to a girls' school in Monrovia, Liberia, as they were battling the Ebola crisis. Whether it's Mario Getza, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, any superstar that exists, we, are now, we now have the ability, with Instagram in the palm of our hand, to see what happens with the most famous people on the planet in these epic moments. And whether it's Germany winning the World Cup uh, or another team winning an amazing championship, this is something that wasn't possible 20 years ago, and we now get to see it every day. So there's all of these communities on the platform, and I think one of my favorites is the community of nerds that exists on Instagram. So Troopers Daily, this is literally a husband and wife who live in Spain and live their daily lives through the eyes of a pair, uh, stormtrooper, which I just think is an, ama is an amazing thing. And they have this massive thing, let alone a business, built on this just whimsy that they uh, created probably one Sunday afternoon as they found something in their attic. Um, so, and this is also happening right outside the doors of this venue today, right? Whether it's an amazing uh, bakery, whether it's the Boston Globe, whether it's Harvard Dangerfield, who has 27,000 followers and he's just a dog that lives in Harvard Square, um, our world is becoming smaller in the palm of our hand each and every day, and I think that's an, a fascinating thing. So, on that note, it's not just people making amazing art or driving social justice, or winning the World Cup that are on Instagram. It's businesses. And this is probably relatively applicable to a lot of us in the audience today as marketers, as people that work at agencies, as people that represent brands. Um, how do brands succeed in this platform? The good news is they succeed each and every day, and I'll share a lot of these experiences with you guys here. Um, and they've also been members of the community since we were founded six years ago. But most often, I'm asked, how do I do it well as a business, and how can I cut through the noise that is happening when I'm up against an illustrator in Germany or I'm Macy's? Um, so I'll kind of talk you through that. But really quickly, um, I'll get through some, some key high-level stats in terms of what businesses are doing on the platform and what we are doing on behalf of them. So first off, 50% of us are following businesses on Instagram. 60% of us are learning about products and services. We can probably all think of an example where we scrolled through something in our feed and said, I want that, or what is this brand? How do I learn more? So 75% of us take action based on what we see. How do I do it well? And I have three really simple recommendations. One, first, capture our imagination. My imagination is captured each and every day in my Instagram feed, and I'm sure a lot of us have similar experiences, and that's not just humans, that's also businesses. So. Two things on that, be immersive, bring us into a moment, tell us a story that will actually transport us out of what we're doing into a different place so we learn more about what's happening with your business or who you are. Second, be relevant, and I think the most uh, pressing thing here around the relevancy is targeting the right people at the right time with the right message. Nobody likes, nobody says I hate advertising. They, they say I hate advertising when it's not relevant. So with the tools within the Facebook and Instagram uh, targeting suite, you can be always relevant to the right people at the right time. There's a great way to be relevant is tapping into passions on the platform. So there's three key passions that bubble up time and time again as kind of these superpowers on Instagram. The first one is music. So six out of our top 10 most followed accounts on Instagram are music uh, accounts, whether it's Selena Gomez or Justin Bieber or you name it. These people are incredibly popular on the platform and brands have been really smart in tapping into this. The music community on Instagram listens to music 30% more than the average human. They spend twice as much on music, so a lot of brands do great things things with music in their ads and in their organic presence. Second, beauty. This goes without saying because uh, Instagram is an inspirational and beautiful place, and so beauty just thrives here, as does fashion. Two-thirds of beauty buyers say they take action based on what they see in their feeds. L'Oreal does an amazing job with creative in this space. And then lastly, sport. I already covered this here, so I'll just quickly cover off on a couple fun facts. 135 million of us saw content related to the Rio Olympics in August on Instagram alone. Some brands tapped into what was happening at the moment, and a brand like Virgin Mobile on the top there with hashtag be the fastest leveraged Usain Bolt as their spokesperson and timed an ad campaign exactly to the moment of the 100 meter finals in Rio and saw amazing success around awareness of their new products and their services in the UK.
So a great way of tapping into passions on the platform and capturing our imaginations, which we're looking to be captured when we're on Instagram. Second, turn inspiration to action. So we come to Instagram looking for inspiration, but brands ultimately really want us to do something. So how do you do that? First off, it works. So we're driving success in brand, we're driving success in performance and DR, and we're driving success in physical in-store traffic and sales. But how do you drive the action? How do you move a consumer through the funnel? Outside of leveraging products like Instagram ad products with calls to action that can lead you off-site to make a purchase, uh, we, we try to think of it in a more artful way. So it's not just storytelling, we think of it as story selling. So Kate Spade does an amazing job of this, as does Harry's. There's nothing more woeful than a horrible mobile experience. So you click off-site and you go to a site that's not mobily optimized, you can't buy it, you can't enter your credit card information. These uh, businesses are doing amazing uh, work with the platform, leveraging our ad and organic products, and building mobile-first businesses. So driving action through inspiration. And then lastly, and I'm going to be wrapping up in a hot minute, is designing for the frame. And this is the idea of the new normal, right? We live in a mobile-first society. This isn't remotely surprising to anyone. But production is not mobile-first. Production is, what's the big idea? Let's charter a plane down to South America, shoot the big TV spot, and leverage that across all the different media. What I say is flip that on its head and create creative and compelling imagery for where people are spending their time. So I'll cover off on one quick thing, Volvo. Click your thumb on their Instagram ad and you go on a mobile test drive in which you experience the safety features of the Volvo XC60 in real time. Volvo's known for their safety. This is totally mobile first, incredibly visual and immersive. And outside of being exciting and different and fun and mobile first, it actually reached 8 million in-market luxury SUV buyers within the one month of the campaign, which I think is successful. So there's tons of examples of great mobile first and visual first communication and brands that are doing amazing amazing work on the platform. So as I wrap it up, I'll remind you of the three key things that I think it takes uh, to be successful on the platform. Capture my imagination, turn my inspiration into action, and design for the frame. Flip the production model on its head and create for the square in which we're spending 20 hours a month. So with that, I think, to remind you of how I started, we are more connected than we ever have been, but I really think this is just the beginning. And Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Pinterest, and Facebook, they're all getting us to this new normal of mobile visual communication. Thanks a lot. Joining Mike, he's directed two feature films. Here's Hill Holiday's Kari Streeter. So, so let's jump right into shopping. Let's do it. Instagram <laughs> shopping. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys didn't see the press last week, we are launching a new consumer feature as of 6 p.m. Central Standard Time this evening. Um, I'm doing my team no favors by sitting on this couch <laughs> today. Uh, we, if, if you guys haven't seen it, I'll quickly kind of tell you. Um, this, what we're doing is basically creating shoppable organic posts on Instagram, something that consumers and brands alike have asked for since Instagram's inception. So the very idea is one of our 20 alpha partners, J. Crew, Warby Parker, Kate Spade, there's a lot of them, businesses large and small, they'll post uh, Instagram posts. I as a user will be prompted to tap on it, at which point I will see which products in that post are shoppable. I can click on the price tags or the product information tags and be led to a browser within Instagram to swipe through the shoppable products and convert essentially right within the Instagram platform. So the big caveat is this is an alpha and with all things alpha come A, tons of bugs, B, tons of learning pains and C, a really slow, slow rollout uh, phase. But we're really excited about shopping on Instagram and the beta phase will likely come in early 2017, at which point more brands will be involved. So all of J. Crew's inventory tonight, <laughs> 6 o'clock? Oh, God, I wish. Uh, <laughs> some of J. Crew's inventory on certain posts tonight at 6 p.m. to certain people on iOS in the U.S. only. <laughs> um, but just a couple of those caveats aside, yes, if you are advertising on Facebook or Instagram and have integrated your product catalog, that is directly where we're taking that information from. So essentially, the entire store of Macy's could be shoppable at one point on Instagram. Any sneaker brands? Just selfishly. Nike. Oh, cool. Yeah. So a whole athletic 
Yep. Peace. Yeah, we're starting e common fashion and we're going to move beyond kind of to all types of goods. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, you also said a word that makes me think of something um, convergence, right? So um, you guys recently, as you said a minute ago, um, released stories. Um, stories is obviously similar to another Snapchat. Yep. Um, and I think I saw WhatsApp is also releasing a stories version. Yep. Um, how do you plan to keep uh, autonomy? How, how is it? become uniquely Instagram? How does it stay that way? Yeah. And as you develop things in the future, how do you avoid that kind of everything seeming the same? I think that's a really good question. And I was one of the skeptics in the room when this was announced internally within the four walls of Instagram. And what I've quickly learned is I use Instagram differently than I use Snapchat, differently than I use Facebook, differently than I use platform XYZ. And what I think is unique about Instagram is that we have a built-in community of 500 million people and these networks we've already organically created. So when I am living my life, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see what I did today. I checked in, got my speaker badge, checked out the ICA from the exterior, came on stage and did this. And I actually don't do the same thing on Snapchat. I tend to be a little more silly. Right, um, and, and Instagram to me seems a bit more permanent. And so I think there are spaces for all of these kind of ephemeral apps and devices, but I think they're unique to each platform and I could probably go on and on. Um, but I think this is just the beginning of stories. This is just the beginning of ephemerality. This is just the beginning of direct messaging um, all within Instagram. I'll sneak one more question in. Yeah. So the future, um, always mobile? The future, is it always mobile? Uh, Instagram isn't just mobile first, it's really mobile only. Um, there's a really basic Instagram uh, desktop version which is nothing like the immersive mobile experience. I would say for the foreseeable five to ten years we are still mobile all the time as an app. Um, but as we continue to progress as a society, as a technology-based society, um, and I think Facebook is going to lead the way here, VR and AR will most likely be massive components of anything within the Facebook family of apps and services. Um, and so I can't even imagine what that will be but I assume it will happen. So next year, um, VR shopping in my closet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Thank you.